I'm involved with the Bottisham Airfield Museum, dedicated to the history of Bottisham Airfield. Bottisham Airfield uh, came into being in 1940 as a satellite for RAF Waterbeach, and is shown here in this 1943 photograph, and uh, was initially used by the Tiger Moth trainers of number 22 Elementary Flying Training School of this type. There were a few RAF accidents, and the, one of the earliest accidents that occurred was this one at Lode Fen, which happened on the 16th of May 1944, with the loss of this young man, First Lieutenant Eugene W. Kinnaird. Being young men as they were, they got into what they call a tussle over the airfield, uh, dodging in and out, trying to get on one another's tail, a bit like a dogfight. Unfortunately, during the course of the dogfight, Gene lost control of his aeroplane and it crashed into a field at Hatley's farm in Lode Fen and he was killed. And this is a very much a piece of the aeroplane that was found in 1975. The Mighty 8th is a huge subject. It was the largest air fighting unit in history. The 8th Air Force came to England in the spring of 42. This is a picture of a, of a, a Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, which was the first kind of airplane that the 361st flew uh, when they came to this country. The runways at Bodisham were widened to accommodate four airplanes taking off together. And the 47 was a very trusty and very strong and dependable airplane up until the spring of 1944 when they converted onto the P-51 Mustang. The Mustang was an entirely different aeroplane with a liquid-cooled Merlin engine. This picture here I'm about to show you is of a typical combat crew, you might say, because you have the aeroplane, and very typically American, you have the name of the aircraft, it could be almost anything, the pilot, and you had a crew chief who looked after the aeroplane, an assistant crew chief, a radio mechanic, and you had an armourer who looked after the guns and the gun sight and the bombs. Thomas Jonathan Jackson Christian Jr. was the great-grandson of the famous Civil War general, Stonewall Jackson. Thomas Christian, or Jack as he was known to all his friends, uh, became the group commander of the 361st Fighter Group in February 1943. Jack was a guy who led from the front, he was only 28 years old in 1944, and he named all his aeroplanes for his young daughter, Lou. And Lou was a name that became attached to at least four aeroplanes. And the aircraft that um, he was sadly to be killed in was Lou number four. This amazing place, built on the flight line at Bottisham, was a Coca-Cola house. Uh, many of you have bought bottles of Coke, even I do once in a while. They actually built this Coca-Cola bar using the uh, cartons and the wooden boxes that uh, fuel tanks came in. I picked up this June 1943 edition of the National Geographic magazine, and on the back is an advert for Coca-Cola. And lo and behold, Stonewall Jackson appears in person in this, what looks like a painting of some sort, obviously a rend rendition of the view sometime during the Civil War. This helmet is, is one of several which I, I purchased. They speak volumes about the guys that wore them and went into combat with them. It wasn't an easy task for, for a young man to be strapped into a Mustang and to be expected to fly for six hours non-stop all the way to Berlin and back. Uh, that's the magnitude of the task. And when young men came back from such missions, they very often had to be lifted physically out of the cockpit because they were so stiff, even as a 22-year-old, uh, they couldn't move when they got the canopy open to try and get out of the aeroplane. It was a very, very tiring and a very exhausting uh, effort to be a fighter pilot. 